Today I'm looking at wild garlic, when to look for it, where to look for it, how to identify it, sustainable harvesting and what we can do with it. Wild garlic can appear at any time from late winter onwards but there are regional variations. As an example I was harvesting and eating it here in Wales in early March. My friends in other parts of the country hadn't even seen a shoot at that time. The second part of the puzzle is where you're likely to find it. It likes damp woodlands, it likes going along the base of old balls where there's a bit of moisture hanging. That's the kind of place to find this stuff. Identification really isn't too difficult, which makes it a beginner friendly foraging plant. Wild garlic tends to grow in clumps and it spreads quite rapidly and you'll quite often find that you'll smell it before you realise that you're in amongst it. But even when you come across a patch like this, remember the golden rule of foraging, 100% ID or leave it be. If you're not 100% sure, don't take it. The leaves are long and thin and pointed and if you look carefully, you'll see the veins running from the base all the way through the tip. And of course one of the biggest tells that you've got wild garlic is that these leaves are quite fragile so if you crush one between your fingers and thumbs and have a smell you'll pick up that really pungent garlicky aroma. Early in the season you just get the leaves appear but as the season moves on a stem will start to grow, the stem will be topped with a bud and that bud will turn into this pretty little cluster of flowers. Each of those flowers will have six petals. When it comes to harvesting, I usually harvest the leaves most because I enjoy them, the flowers occasionally because they've got a very, very distinct flavour that's not really to my palate, but I never take the bulbs because if you take the bulbs, you're taking away the plant. Another rule when you're foraging, whether it's wild garlic or anything, is not to take too much. Never strip a patch bare, make sure that you leave plenty for nature. And as with everything that we do outdoors, always follow the ethos and ethics of Leave No Trace. I'll drop a link in the description below. When you're foraging for wild garlic, even though it's a beginner's plant, it's really easy sometimes to pick up plants that are not particularly good for you. In particular, I'm thinking of Lily of the Valley or Lords and Ladies. You may not mistake them uh, when they become a full adult plant, but as a juvenile, it's easy to get confused and end up with them in your basket. And that's why it's so important to make sure that you positively identify every leaf, every berry, every nut, everything that you pick. No matter how experienced you are, this little pocket guide makes an invaluable companion when you're foraging. And one more quick kind of obvious warning but it should be said is if you're foraging along footpaths, public rights away, be careful what you pick close to the path. A lot of people walk those paths with dogs and I know you know where I'm going with this. So now you've harvested your wild garlic, but what can you do with it? When I'm out and about cooking outdoors, most of my cooking is like this, one pan and quite quick. As an example right now, I'm cooking off some mushrooms to have in a roll. Uh, they're forage from a supermarket uh, and I'm using a bit of wild garlic just to give it a bit of, bit of extra flavour. If I make a stew, if I'm uh, kind of bringing my, my larger pot, then I'll throw some in there too. But most of the time, the majority of the wild garlic that I harvest goes home to the kitchen. Mm. Delicious. When I'm at home, I use wild garlic in a variety of ways. Some of it I use fresh in recipes and some of it I preserve for later use. I do like to make my own wild garlic butter. I make my butter from scratch using double cream, uh, heavy cream, I think they call it in the US. Uh, once it's kind of solidified, then I massage through the wild garlic leaves, shredded obviously. Um, this is fantastic if you're gonna make your own garlic bread to go to cut a disc on steak or whatever. I normally make plenty, some I eat fresh, some I give away to friends, and some, like this one, I pop in the freezer and a few of these will last me through until next season. Another great way of preserving wild garlic leaves is to dry them, so I'm using a dehydrator. Once they're dry and crispy, just pop them into the pestle and mortar and grind them up into powder. The resulting powder is quite fine and it's quite pungent and it makes a great addition to many foods. It's easy to carry, so if I'm going to cook outdoors then I'll take some of this. I just store it in airtight containers and it lasts for ages. Another really cool and easy way to preserve this is to freeze it. The way I do that is to pop it into a blender, whip it up into, into juice in effect, 
maybe pop in some olive oil, sometimes a little bit of lemon juice, put it into uh, an ice cube tray, pop it in the freezer, pop those little cubes out and then you've got garlic cubes whenever you want them. Another really popular way of using wild garlic leaves is to make wild garlic pesto. And I start by shredding the leaves. Then I give them a good old bash up with the pestle and mortar. Again, if you really wanted to make this fine, you could just chuck it into a blender. Um, I prefer to have a bit more texture to mine. So I give it a good old bash up in there to break the leaves up, get the flavors out. I toast some pine nuts in a pan usually quite a generous amount. I grate some Parmesan cheese, I like a bit of cheesy flavour in there. And just mix it all together. Some cheese in the bowl. Put in the wild garlic, get rid of the husky hair. Mash that up a bit. Should have done a bit more wild garlic really. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll uh, scrunch in a bit of this dried stuff. Chuck in the pine nuts. Looking good. Add some olive oil. And from there, you can either use it fresh from the bowl or pop it into a kilner jar, which is what I do, and leave it in the fridge for a week or two. And you can put some finely chopped leaves and mix it in with cream cheese. This stuff's great, you know, you can have it in sandwiches, you can have it on crackers, and there are so many different recipes that you can fall back on to use this stuff. There are loads more ways of using wild garlic that I've not mentioned, probably because I don't know them. There are some that just aren't my taste. For example, some people like using the leaves in salad. I don't like it, so I don't go there. Some people really enjoy fermented products and fermented wild garlic leaves. Again, that's my, not my taste, so I don't go there either. Um, a few years ago, I did try making like a, a clear crab apple jelly with suspended wild garlic flowers and it. it looked awesome. My idea was that it would go well with game. I made six jars, I opened and tried one, uh, that went in the bin. The other five jars went as uh, presents to friends. I've got a funny feeling they all ended up in the bin too. Drop a comment below and let me know what you do with wild garlic. And if there's something entirely new, we're here to learn, share the story. That's it, video over, thanks for tuning in. As always, be good, be brilliant, be awesome. And remember, if I can help you in any way, get in touch, let's have a conversation and make good stuff happen. See ya.